With its Amazon Fire HD 10 2019, the company released a new version of its popular 10 inch tablet after waiting for two years. I thought the predecessor is an excellent value for a long time, but the new one has to compete against a very strong competitor from Samsung. I'm NJ for MyNextTablet.com and in this review you will learn if and for who this tablet is a great value. Not much has changed compared to the last version. According to Amazon, the 9th generation Fire HD 10 is 30% faster than its predecessor. Instead of a quad core processor, they are using an octa core chipset with 8 cores that run with up to 2 GHz. While Amazon is not telling us the processor brand, according to benchmark tools, it consists of 4 Cortex A73 and 4 Cortex A53 cores. In addition to that, the tablet offers 2GB of RAM and you can choose between a 32 or 64GB internal storage. There's no LTE option right now. I got the one with 32GB and out of the box you can use 25.52GB for yourself. My benchmark comparison shows that the single core performance is very similar, but the multi core performance improved a lot compared to the predecessor. In Geekbench 4, the Fire HD 10 is even faster than the pricier Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.1 2019. Usually, I'm also testing it with the Antutu benchmark, but that's not supported here. Since the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.1 is such an interesting competitor, I compared their graphics performance in more detail. In the Geekbench 4 Compute and 3D Max Linkshot Extreme test, the Fire HD 10 scores quite a bit better than the Samsung tablet. That's important to know because if you're looking for a sub $200 tablet, you will have to choose between the two. I think real life performance is great, especially for its price. Single apps like Chrome, YouTube and Netflix run smoothly. I also edited some photos with Adobe Lightroom and that works as it should. Sure, it's not as snappy as a high-end tablet, but that's to be expected of course. Usually I also test multitasking performance by running and using two apps side by side. However, the Fire HG 10 does not support a split screen view. If you switch between apps, the multitasking performance is good. Not great, but certainly good enough. However, because of its 2GB of RAM, apps get closed faster in the background as they do on tablets with more RAM. That's what I noticed when browsing the web in Chrome 2. If you use 4 tabs or more, chances are at least one of them must be reloaded once you switch to it. So if you do lots of multitasking, this is not ideal for you. I tried several games on the Amazon Fire HD 10 and they all run fine. Basically, you will be able to play almost every game with this tablet, no matter if it's from the Amazon App Store or the Google Play Store. Occasionally it can happen that one is not supported, but that's very rare. One game I tried is the new Call of Duty. It runs surprisingly well. You can set the graphics settings to high and the game looks good. Like my benchmark comparison earlier suggested, the performance is better than on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.1. With that one you can set the graphics to medium only. In real life however, it's hard to see a real difference. That's what I can say about PUBG Mobile 2. It runs smoothly most of the time and you can set the graphics to HD. However, with both games the graphics are dynamic. That means they get adjusted a bit based on the performance. You can play PUBG with HD settings on two tablets and they look better on the more powerful one even though the settings are the same. Asphalt 9 is another game I tried, that one's great as well. I played it with the Microsoft Xbox wireless controller I've been testing and that works fantastic. I also checked what other people are writing about this tablet and I've read on several occasions that reviewers said the performance is too weak. However, that's not my experience at all. I think the performance is pretty good. Yes, not great for multitasking, but the gaming performance is excellent for its price class. Sure, the new iPad is much faster, but it costs twice as much. For $150 the performance is good. You can play most games, yes not with the highest graphics, but at least they do run which is important at this price. The design of the Amazon Fire HD 10 did not change in the last two years. It has the same 10.1 inch screen and the black bezels around it are quite big. 
that's the case in general because it's 9.8 millimeters thick, which is quite a lot. At the same time, it weighs 504 grams. Well, it's a very cheap tablet, so I think it's okay that it does not play in the highest league regarding its design. It has a full plastic body. Still, the body seems very robust. You can get it not only in black, but also in plum, white and twilight blue now. I decided to get the blue one. Those colors make it look a bit higher end than it really is. By the way, my last Fire HG 10 got visible scratches on its back fast. So if you don't want that, I suggest you get a case for it. A new feature is the USB-C port that sits on one of its shorter sides. It's the first Amazon tablet with a USB-C port. Next to it is a power button and on the same side are a headphone jack and the volume controls. On the right side there's a micro SD card slot. The cards can be up to 512GB in size. On one of the longer sides the tablet has two speakers. You can hear a real stereo separation which is great. Overall the sound quality is okay. Sure, not as good as tablets with four speakers, but good enough for its price. It's certainly fine for watching YouTube, Netflix and Amazon video. Both cameras have a resolution of 2 megapixels and both are capable of recording 720p videos. Well, as you can expect from 2 megapixel cameras, the quality is bad. Yes, even for this price. For video chats it's kind of acceptable, but yeah, that's it. Amazon is shipping the Fire HG 10 with the same 10.1 inch IPS screen they used for the 2017 version. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and a full HD resolution with 1920 by 1200 pixels. I always think that the resolution is fine on 10 inches. The screen takes all of the important aspects of a screen which makes it better than most if not all cheaper alternatives. It has an IPS panel with wide viewing angles, color reproduction is fine as well. And I really like that we're getting a fully laminated screen. That's what many cheaper tablets are lacking. Its brightness is good too, not great, but good. An active stylus is not supported. It does have the necessary DM standards to support Netflix in HD though. So while the screen is not new, I think it continues to be fantastic in this price range. The Amazon Fire HD 10 is shipping with Fire OS in version 7.3.1.1. While it is an Android tablet, Amazon is not mentioning Android anywhere. Fire OS is based on the open source version of Android and has nothing to do with what Google is doing. Yes, that's why apps like YouTube, Gmail and the Google Play Store are missing. It's interesting to note that the Fire HD 10 2019 is the first Amazon tablet on which the Fire OS is based on Android 9. At least that's what benchmark tools are saying and the navigation buttons look like Android 9 too. Besides that, I didn't notice any big change compared to other recent Fire tablets. I was hoping that they are going to include a split screen view now, but as I said, that's still not supported. With one exception, apps like Netflix and Prime Video can continue to run in a small window while you surf the web for instance. Amazon customized the interface of Android a lot. For Prime members that can be very useful, you've got direct and fast access to all the services. These include Kindle Books, Prime Video, Audible and the Amazon App Store. Some of Amazon's own apps are pre-installed as well. We're getting the Amazon Photo app, the own Silk browser and a couple of standard ones like a calendar, email app and a files manager. Integrated into Fire OS is Alexa. I'm sure you're familiar with the voice assistant already. The tablet supports Alexa hands-free. That means you can call her even when the screen is turned off. You can also activate the so-called show mode. Once you do that, the tablet acts like an echo show and will display additional information. You will see ads on the lock screen if you're getting your tablet with the so-called special offers. Many of these ads are for books, but not all. You won't see ads anywhere else, so it's not too annoying. Well, except you see Amazon stuff everywhere. If you don't want ads at all, you can pay $15 extra. The Amazon App Store has some important apps like Netflix and Spotify and you can find some interesting games too. However, the selection is much smaller than the one from the Google Play Store. All Google apps are missing. Many from Microsoft are not included either. And if you're looking for something in particular, chances are you won't find it. Well, the Fire HG 10 is running Android, it just does not always look like it. That means you can install pretty much every APK you can find. If you want, you can also install the Google Play Store yourself. That is surprisingly easy as long as you follow instructions that you can find online. It might void your warranty though. I installed the Play Store on my tablet immediately 
because I like Prime Video and Netflix, but I also want to watch YouTube. And I installed many other apps using the Play Store like Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, Lightroom, Gmail and Chrome. As I said, you can install most Android apps because it is Android. Let's get to its battery life. In my standard battery test, the tablet got a runtime of 20 hours. For this, I'm looping an HD video at medium brightness and activated Wi-Fi for all of my reviews. As you can see, those 20 hours is an excellent result. Amazon is stating a 12 hour battery life only. But my result is theoretical. You can get to those 20 hours when you watch a movie locally. But when streaming Netflix or Prime Video, the runtime will be much lower. Yes, I should probably update my battery test eventually, but I've been testing all tablets like this for years and it provides at least some comparable results. I don't want to put down the excellent battery life though, the Fire HD 10 lasts long in real life too. Alright, that's the end of my Amazon Fire HD 10 review. Can I recommend this tablet? That depends on what you're looking for. I think it's very interesting if you're a Prime member and are using those services from Amazon. Or if you want to spend as little money as possible. And for some, Alexa is a super interesting feature too. Since I'm only using it with the Google Play Store, I can only recommend it if you're going to install it too. Or if you just want it for watching Prime Video, Netflix and some games, for your kids for instance. The screen continues to be excellent in this price range and that's what I can say about the battery life too. Its performance is very good for its price, but the build quality could be a bit better. It seems to be robust, but it does not feel high end. With a price tag of $150, it is super cheap and I think it's the best tablet in exactly this price class. In fact, it's the cheapest 10 inch tablet I can recommend without having to state tons of downsides. The value is fantastic. Well, at least if you're going to install the Google Play Store. Without it, I wouldn't use it. If you've got the predecessor already, it's not really worth it to upgrade. Let's check out some alternatives. The most interesting competitor is the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 10.1 2019. It features a 10.1 inch Full HD screen too and the build quality is similar. That's the case for most other aspects too, they are very similar in general. However, the Galaxy Tab is running Google's Android including the Google Play Store, Gmail, YouTube and Chrome. It also supports all standard Android features like the split screen view. When comparing them directly, the graphics performance is not as good as on the Fire, but in real life differences are not that big. For most, I think it's a simpler and easier alternative because you don't have to install the Play Store yourself. Instead, you get the same operating system you're probably familiar with from your phone and you will likely get new Android updates too. Prices vary a lot by country, but usually it costs below $200. If prices are similar, I'd personally go with the Samsung one. A cheaper alternative is the Amazon Fire HD 8. It's much smaller with its 8 inch screen and the performance is weaker too. But it's a solid small tablet that works well, as long as you don't have too high expectations. There's no cheaper 10 inch tablet that I can recommend comfortably right now. Alright, that's the end of my Amazon Fire HD 10 2019 review. If you have any questions, please feel free to write me in the comments below and check out mynexttablet.com. I'm reviewing pretty much every tablet and there you can always find mine and our recommendations. I'm NJ, thanks for watching and see you next time.